Well, good morning. I hope everybody has their thinking caps on. Back to the uh, extended modeling techniques for basic walls in the Autodesk suite of uh, the AEC collection. If you have your coffee, uh, we're ready to go. There's a lot to get to. We gotta get these, uh, these construct construction documents out the door. Or we have to create shop drawings from these construction documents. Or we have to coordinate this model. Or we have to create a model to be able to coordinate with the other trades who have created models or are creating models. Or we're in the conceptual phase and we're just starting to gather our thoughts and put pen, pencil to paper. So I'm predictable. I like to have my cigarette first thing in the morning until I reach my level of nicotine. Well, we're going to be talking about walls again and uh, how walls join too. Now, we, we've talked a little bit about uh, placing walls and um, we've talked a bit about uh, some modeling techniques for some basic walls, uh, adding different uh, material surfaces and changing um, adjacent layer thicknesses. Uh, we didn't really get into stacked walls yet, and we surely didn't get into uh, any complex wall systems. But we're going to do that. We're going to do that right now. So what I'm going to do is just I'm going to open up the wall articulation file again. And if you remember, it's in the Kappa 13 subdirectory from the Books Companion website. I'm just gonna drag my browser open whoop, by hovering over the delineation line and just close this start screen. All right, so we're back to that same um, situation where we have two basic walls and we remember that we uh, have carte blanche to edit the structure uh, in its edit assembly dialog box, uh, manipulating it as we go. So, <laughs> again, don't forget, Walls are important, and I, and I think, I'm just going to stress this over and over again, that failure is almost as unpleasant as quitting, and sometimes it takes years before a quitter tries again. Failing is like getting an F on your report card. Every time you fail, you rack up another F. You know what happens to kids who get a lot of Fs. After a while, they stop trying. Adults are the same way. Now, on the adult side... I may not be able to help you, or I may not have much empathy, but I give a lot of lateral movement to those under the age of 51. But I think I should at least have a delineation line myself. So maybe at the age of 52, I'll lose my patience with those who are uh, who refuse to, uh, to switch gears and, and get with the program. Now, editing wall joints Another common design and construction scenario, you may need to specifically control how two or more walls behave when they intersect. There are a number of ways to customize these occurrences. Let's explain uh, or examine two scenarios where wall joints may need to be edited, phasing conditions and acute angle of corners. When you create a model for a renovation of an existing building, you will likely create elements that are existing, demolished, and new. In the example, a new wall and a wall to be demolished are intersecting at existing wall, at an, uh, intersecting an existing wall. Notice the walls are cleaning up with each other as they normally would if they were all in the same phase. Well, we haven't created any uh, phases in this drawing. Uh, but you recall, based on phase, um, we can apply a different view parameters to each phase and override the graphics in that phase. Now, as you can see, 
projection and cut uh, will have different line patterns. So let's just grab this one, face created, and let's see if we could uh, create a face filter. Now we're not seeing the face. Okay, so now that wall, if I unselect it, this phase is now showing new construction. Now if I say show existing, it shows the existing as a dotted line, a uh, dash line with a hatch pattern. If you just review, you'll remember that depending on how you assign the element, you'll see just what you see based on what the element's phase created parameter is and its phase demolished parameter. So let's just undo that for a second because we've been through that exercise and this exercise isn't the exercise to set up phasing. Uh, if you'd like to go back and discuss phasing, we can look back at the chapter and we can do that. But I'm just going to uh, move this wall up to here. I'm going to override um, the graphics of this view by element. And I'm just going to uh, change its, uh, its parameters here. Now it's cut lines. I'm going to uh, change the pattern to hidden. It's projection lines. I'm going to change them to hidden. And it's cut pattern. I'm going to change it to, to diagonal down. Make sure it works, and, and that's what I'm going to do with that. Uh, actually, you know what? I think I want to turn off the, the pattern. I don't want to give this a pattern right yet. Now, that's a, a really fast override. It's almost synonymous with changing uh, the line type of... Uh, by block or by layer uh, in AutoCAD. But for this exercise, uh, wall joints, we're going we're gonna to do some things here that I wanted to, uh, to demonstrate to you if I can uh, without using the phase parameters. It very well may be that I have to utilize the phase parameters to illustrate this, but I want to see if I can get through this without that extra step. And if I, if I don't, if I can't, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll augment the next video as opposed to stopping. Because I try to do this all in one take, despite the mistakes that I make. And then I go back and I ascertain uh, what I missed. For example, centrifugal and centrifugal force are two different things. <laughs> and, uh, Four foot minus seven and an eighth is a different number than you might think. But when you look and get a specific number, you, uh, you foil. So don't follow my mathematics. In another common design in construction stream, you need to specifically control how two or more walls behave when they intersect. Okay, well, uh, when you create a model for a renovation of an existing building, you likely create elements that are existing, demolished, and new. In the example shown in figure 13.23, a new wall and a wall to be demolished are intersecting an existing wall. A new wall and a wall to be demolished. Well, let's see here. We have a new wall. Let's copy this. And now it's a different line type. It's a different line type. If you look, and we overrode this one. So now what, whatever we do to this, you may notice, even though we overrode the graphics by uh, element, 
we were able to re-override by phase. Well, now this is phase created new construction, phase demolished new construction, so it's temporary. And if we don't demolish it, well, then that's what its pattern looks like. Existing, demolished, and new. Well, this is new, it's not getting demolished. This is going to be demolished. And this is existing. And it's not getting demolished. So there's a slight difference in the line type based on the phase overrides. Right? <laughs> right? If we remember, if we assign a phase status to an element, we'll get a, a specific projection and cut pattern and material. So there's a slight difference in the hidden line types for existing and demolished. We could change that or we can make a note of it and notice that uh, one is a bit bolder and it has a different LT scale or uh, a smaller space between the dashes. Let's just keep that as it is. And we could always, if we get confused, just double check down our phase filter, uh, our properties dialog box. So let's just review. This is an existing wall and it's getting demolished during the new construction phase. This is an existing wall and it's not getting demolished. This is a new wall and it's not getting demolished. That could be deceiving a bit, so we could override the phase filter, but for now we're not going to. Now, at least I don't have to open up another drawing that has a, and create new phases. Depending on your template, if your phases, uh, your phase filters and your phase graphic overrides uh, are programmed in, or if you've used the right uh, uh, build version, they may already be set to the default status out of the box. So you may have them at your fingertips already to be able to augment if you need. Uh, now, notice that the walls are cleaning up with each other as they normally would if they were all in the same phase. Well, that's fine now. It wasn't the case before. But if you would like to change the graphic behavior of the new and demolished walls when they intersect the existing wall, follow these steps. Select the new or demolished wall Right-click the grip control at the end of the wall you'd like to modify and select Disallow Join. <laughs> well, uh, here it is. Disallow Join. This will cause the walls to overlap. I don't, oh, at this end. Disallow join. Uh, I don't see, oh, there it is. D it, this will cause the walls to overlap. We'll do this one as well. Now if we do it from this grip, you don't see the, dis, uh, the overlap. If you do it from this grip, you see the overlap. And if you think, if you, sh if you look at this, if we were to draw a model line, it just so happens to overlap at the core center of the wall. Now, that being said, just make a note of that. To complete this operation, you can use the Trim Extend the Single Element or Trim Extend Multiple Elements tool or simply drag the endpoints of the walls to create the most appropriate intersecting conditions. Well, the trim, extend, or drag wall endpoints to complete the modification operation is performed this way. Well, you see there's a little uh, button here, it's allow join, and we're not going to discuss that yet, but you can grab the grip and bring it to any layer that you want, if indeed you can see that layer. Now, if we set this to medium, and we look at the walls that we have, we have a uh, basic wall, exterior brick on metal stud. We have exterior brick on metal stud, basic wall. But they're, um, they have different properties, these walls. So if we, let's just, well, we can match the properties so we can get a better idea. But 
I want this wall to uh, to uh, to be able to show. <clears throat> It's, uh, it's interior parameters. Now, um, that's prohibiting us at the moment, so uh, I think what would be prudent would be, let's do it like this. No, I'm not getting, uh, now what is it that's differentiating these uh, three walls from being uh, displaying differently? We're going, and, and it could very well be because of the phasing override. So I'm not going to um, delve into, I'm not gonna delve into the difference right now in the uh, graphical overrides right this moment. I'm just gonna set this view to medium. Now, you can use the trim, extend, single element now. That's right up here in the modified. Trim extends single element. Trims or extends one element, such as a wall, line, or beam, to a boundary defined by another element. Now watch how it works. Select the reference to use as a boundary or a cut plane. Then select the element to trim or extend. It's similar to the AutoCAD trim command. When selecting an element to trim, click on the part of the element to retain. Now that's left and right of the wall, if you think about it. It's like this wall extended past, it's going to be important that you pick the right location. So if I was to trim to extend, well first select a reference as the trim extend boundary. Notice in the status bar, I get a hint. So let's select this as the reference to trim, the cut plane. Now you have to pick left or right. It's going to make a difference. If you pick on this side, well, it's going to keep that side. If you pick on this side, oops, If you pick on this side, it's going to keep this side, right? Don't do that. If you pick on this side, it's going to keep that side. So left and right. That shouldn't be uh, too much of a uh, difficult. Uh, it's only 7 o'clock. I get a little nervous. <laughs> anyway, so allow. Let's do this again. Allow join. Be you knows disallow join, right? Okay, so. That kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of the, the, um, the trim extends single element. And we can discuss the multiple elements because you do that all at once. If, uh, if indeed you had multiple walls and you uh, wanted to perform a multiple operation, and they don't really discuss this in this chapter, but they should. You have something like this and you wanted to trim these up. You can um, invoke the trim extend multiple elements. Trims or extends multiple elements, such as walls, lines, and beams, to a boundary defined by another element. Select the reference used as a boundary. Then use the selection box, or individually, select the elements to trim or extend. Portions of the element located on the side of the boundary where you click, or start the selection box or routine. So make note of that. If you're going to use the selection box, where you start that pick is where it's going to remain. So let's do it two different ways. Let's select a reference as a trim extended boundary. Draw a selection box around or pick parts of elements to keep. Well, if I was to draw a selection box from left to right around these two elements, you'll see it'll, uh, it'll air towards the side or cut towards the side where the selection box upper left hand corner was picked. And that same holds true if you just uh, select the reference line as a trim extend boundary, select the side you want to keep. That's the same thing as doing this. But you could do that, and then you have it the other way around. So that's a quick tutorial on the trim, uh, extend, multiple elements. Um, there's another quick tool I should show you since we're in this uh, modified toolbar. It's called the align. You could actually align one or more elements with the selected element. So if you watch the video, you can see how you could align certain things. If I was to align, let's see if I get this to work. Select line or point reference for alignment. 
Well, what's wrong with the end of this wall? Absolutely nothing. Please select any entity to align it to align. It will move into alignment with the reference. Isn't that sweet? Notice how the floor moved with it. The bidirectional associativity of this and the parameters of the constraints are what are gonna have you supersede your peers. Because AutoCAD LT and a lot of these drafted microstation and uh, AutoCAD MEP, they, they're, they, they, they're great for drafting and, and in the machining world and in the mechanical aspect. Uh, I'm not gonna complain uh, from a mechanical perspective. There are strengths and weaknesses of software platforms. <sighs> this one focuses on its strengths. So now, for walls that meet at an acute angle, you can use the Edit Wall Joints tool to control the resolution uh, of the intersection. Now, you know me, I'm not gonna let you rest on your laurels. I won't let you rest on your laurels. You're, you're, gonna, you're gonna know what an acute triangle is right now. And, and, and if you don't know, you're, you're not gonna wait because you have to always uh, use your brain so you don't lose it. An acute triangle is a triangle with three acute angles less than 90, right? And a two triangle is a triangle with one of two angle greater than 90 and two acute. So um, this is probably a good example right here. Right? So one angle, this one is greater than 90. It's 90 plus 10. And then here, all three are less than 90. Obviously one. Uh, 90 will give us the right angle. Uh, and that's the basics, right? This is basic geometry. Basic geometry. Obviously, there's more. And we'll, we're going to have to cover all this as we go through. So don't, um, uh, don't get too caught up in that. But don't forget that you really have to, you have to remember that uh, you have to draw on what you have learned uh, cumulatively unfortunately and fortunately and that's gonna be good for you because it'll keep you it'll keep you on point all right so now like i said for walls that meet at an acute angle you can use the edit wall joints tool control the resolution of the intersection well we don't have one of those yet so let's just draw a wall and let's give it a, a 35 45 degree angle let me turn it this way now and as you can see where it joins if you look It joins, where it joins is, uh, is going to be the, uh, the big question. So from the modified table, locate the geometry panel, select the wall joins tool from the uh, modified tab. The walls join tool, that's not it, right here. This is the geometry panel. Now you can see, join geometry in this video creates clean joints between two or more host elements that share a common face, such as walls and floors. The join geometry tool removes the visible edges between joined elements. The joined elements then can share the same line weight and fill pattern. So this is when you, you may have to clean things up. So, from the modified tab in the ribbon, locate the geometry panel and select the wall joints tool. Hovering mouse pointer over an intersection of two walls at an acute angle. You will see a box appear around the conditions that can be modified. Well, they're actually not joining there. You'll see a box appear. In the options bar, you will see a number of choices to help you customize the joining condition between the walls created in the selection. Well, I don't see uh, I don't see the box appear. So we're gonna have to, uh, I, haven't been, I haven't been able to get the options dialog box to open up. Let's, make, let's see if it's because this wall uh, was inserted at the wrong uh, insertion point. Let's get it from the core. No. Just right mouse click this. It's joint. Modify. Geometry. Hover over. 
is the intersection of where two walls join at an acute angle. Oh, at an acute angle. Am I not the silliest man? You see what I get? Do you see what I get? That's what I get. At an acute angle. <laughs> Practice what you preach, Mr. Lipinski. <laughs> Practice what you preach. Preach Well, it's acute uh, in the negative 45 degree direction. Practice what you preach. Well, this is acute to this. This is acute to this. But I'm not getting, I'm not getting the box. First, pick solid geometry to be joined. This may be the box that's with the cursor. The solid geometry to be joined. Well, that would be this. Select solid geometry joined to the previously selected solid. Well, let's try this. Well, that didn't give it to us. Let's try this. Let's try... Ah, now here. Did I get the, uh, did I get the dialogue box? Did I get the dialogue box? No, I didn't get the dialogue box. Or did I? No, I've run to a, a learning curve of my own making. Well, let's just do something for a second. Give me a second here. Let's just clean something up. Let's clean this up, shall we? For starters, you follow me along if you want. It's your prerogative. Okay, that's more of what I wanted to see. There was an override on that wall to begin with, so I want to uh, make sure we have this where we want. Okay, well, this wall is joined, and the computer is running something in the background. Something devious. Join, hover over. First pick select geometry to be joined. Well, it's already joined. So if I disallow join, or better yet, maybe because it's joined, we're having that issue. It's already trimmed and, and the geometry is already cut. Let's try it where it's intersected without any, any cut parameters. Select solid geometry to be joined. We want to join this. Select the solid geometry to be joined to the previously selected solid. Well, we want to join this. Now, if we flip back, we see it joined, but we didn't get the option. We didn't get the options. Um, and, and that's because we're not at a into, we're not at an end point where it joins. We're at a midpoint. Uh, we're, we're in between. It. And, and I'm going to show you what it is. I just caught what it is that I, uh, that I uh, overlooked. It's, uh, it's the apex of where they join. It's the apex of where the acute triangle joins. But for this particular uh, demonstration, that's a good idea as well. Uh, this will join it based on its, uh, its uh, cut hierarchy. And that's good. So that's always good to know. So even though um, there may have been a speed bump, um, this is still, you gotta find a silver lining to every cloud. Learn something new every day. And you will, if you explore the software, if you take the time to hover over the tool tips, and, 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 you, and you take the time, you'll see that you're going to save yourself a lot of drafting work, a lot of mouse clicks. You're going to save your neck a lot of moving back and forth. They're, they're, you're going to save a lot of clicks. You're going to save a lot of clicks because what it is that invokes the options bar is where the wall meets at an apex of, and if it's acute, um, you'll get the options bar, I believe. So, uh, let's draw another wall from the corner of this wall on a 45 degree angle this way. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. That's what Z has. Now that's what I'm talking about. That's not what I was talking about a few minutes ago. Maybe, and I doubt it, it's more uh, a brain uh, function than anything. Maybe I need more coffee. But this video is going long for a couple paragraphs, so 
let's just stay on point and get this get through this because we have a lot more to go. Um, okay, so for walls that meet at an acute angle, you can use the edit walls joints tool to control the resolution of the intersection. From the modify tab in the ribbon, go to the geometry panel and select the wall joints tool. Hover your mouse pointer over an intersection of two walls at an acute angle. Well, that's the uh, the acute angle right there. Acute to this direction, not acute to this direction. So that's the interesting part of this. It is acute. It all depends on which uh, rotation you're looking, counterclockwise or clockwise. So. In the options bar, you'll see a number of choices to help you customize uh, Well, let's see. I don't see the... Uh, no, I don't see it. Well, what am I going to do? Am I going to give up and quit? Well, it's already joined. Let's see if I unjoin it. Let's try it here. Joins here. Select solid jump to be, to be joined. Well, I joined it, but I'm not getting the options. I'm not getting the options. So let's read it again. Oh, wait a second. This is joint geometry. I don't see. Is there a join walls? Um, no, that's the join ge Oh, I'm sorry. Well, there you go, silly boy. I'm trying to join geometry. Lines, arcs, circles. Um, I believe this works for solids as well. But walls are, are something different, right? Walls are something different. I clicked the wrong button. <laughs> it happens. It happens. And when you come in from, a, from an electrical perspective, uh, having to stop and then calibrate the machine after 20 years, uh, you, may, you may hit the wrong button. But hopefully it's not the launch button. So... Uh, Again, I, I'll always make an excuse. I have an excuse, I swear. I screwed it up, but I have an excuse. It was my fault. It was, it was your fault. Have you ever been in an environment where not, the, the Teflon folks, that it's always somebody's fault, that one person or a group of people in the office, all they do all day long is do this, that's it. And then you have the management staff, like, oh, shit. how do I get these people to work together and be productive, right? But, you know, after 51 years, I've noticed more often than not, that's the environment in business. And, and if you pick up that right from the get-go, you'll be better off knowing whether or not you have a home within an organization. You, you have to find a, a, an organization with the culture that you're looking for. And if you can't find it, you have to keep trying. Or well, you're going to be miserable at work. And that message is for someone uh, who I hold uh, near and dear to my heart. So, uh, failure is not an option for us. Join walls. Ah, there's the options bar. Silly rabbit. Okay, where it joins, a box will form around it. Oh, it sure will. It sure will. A box will form around it. And there's the box, which is what we were, the book was trying to tell us, tell me, tell you. Maybe you already knew. Maybe you are enjoying watching me fumble through the keys. You ever go up and down a guitar and you're trying to play the right chords, which I can't, on the neck of a guitar, and you always kind of, your finger always kind of just doesn't get between the frets. You just can't get it there. It's the same concept. It's the same concept. Having your fingers running up down the neck of a, of a string instrument and having it perfectly get picked up to be uh, preempt uh, is uh, it's, it's not easy and, and, it, and it holds true for any instrument inclusive of this one so that's why we have sessions that's why we have sessions now I can go live I've been able to 
set up the broadcast studio, but I don't think there's a real, re, real reason to go live. <laughs> I don't think there's a reason. But let's just, uh, let's not deviate from the center. Because I, I have some things I have to do today before I can get back to this. I have some errands from, but it's only 7.27. And no one's going to get into work until 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock anyway, 8 o'clock. So early bird gets the worm. So that's, uh, I can't stress that enough. All right, so we're uh, joining the geometry. So hover, hover over it at the intersection. You will see a box appear on the conditions that can be modified with this tool. Well, what do you know? Here as well. And at the end, and at the end. So I click it, and you see we got we settings. Clean join, don't clean join. Um, use view settings. Configuration previous next butt miter square off display. Uh, allow join, disallow join. Just like it, as if we right mouse clicked the grip. So in the options bar, you'll see a number of choices to help you customize the joining conditions between the walls related to the, sec uh, the selection. To cycle through the available options, choose one of the joining types, butt, miter, or square off, and then click the previous or next button. Show some options. Well, there's butt. One wall joins, picked. Click to select. Tab for alternates. Control adds, shift, unselects. Well, we could select that. We could select that. We could select that and that. Five wall joints picked. Click to select. Tab for alternates. We don't have an option to see how it looks. We can only, it's only butt, butt splice. Well, that's not going to help us. So let's hover over this one. Disallow join, hover over it, and we still don't get the option. We don't get the option of uh, of configuring the miter cut. To cycle through the available op options, choose one of the join types. Well, it's not allowing us, and it could very well be because of the fact that it's not actually joined, and it's kind of cutting through. Let's just see if that's what's prohibiting us because of the fact that it's already um, a join but to not intersect. Let's see if this um, can uh, give us a little more assistance. Ah, there we go. I guess because it was a through wall, it, it already cleaned up. All right, so now we have the intersection where both walls join and we have the option of either cycling through how this joins a butt, a miter, squared off. And as you can see, there are options which way you could square it off. And look, the cut hierarchy remains intact. If you see that cut hierarchy, uh, a one will cut everything, a five will cut nothing. Right? So this is um, miter is miter. You don't really get much of an option. That's squared off. Any carpenter would love this. If you're a carpenter, you would love this. And you see exactly how many options you've got. And you're going to be constrained by your uh, cut hierarchy. <coughs> so now, clean showing. Don't clean join. Okay. So now, that's cycling through the uh, one of the joining types. You can choose various corner conditions with the wall joints tool. That is correct. Okay. So that pretty much gets us there. It gets us there to a certain degree. It, it wasn't a, 
smooth road on this particular power graph. But as you can see, um, this was a certification objective. And then the next lesson is as well, modifying wall properties. And this is so much fun. Modifying wall properties is a lot of fun. Um, we may hit our speed bumps, but that's okay, right? That's okay. That's a lot of work. That's a lot of work. <laughs> so let's just leave it at that, shall we? That's a lot of work. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's a... Uh, I shouldn't say that. There's a lot more to it. A lot, lot, there's a lot of complicated wall systems and that you have to take in consideration. But I think it's a start for anyone who may gravitate down this path. Uh, this may be your forte, interior work, exterior work, uh, form work. Uh, again, carpenters and laying this stuff out and, and having to, uh, to cut framing members, and structural members. This could help when you're laying it out. And in, in most cases, you're going to uh, you're going to have to uh, to provide shop drawings. So, that being said, throw phasing into the mix, and you're going to have a powerful tool at your fingertips. All right, I have a few things I gotta do this morning. We're gonna get, we're gonna get to modifying wall profiles, which is, like I said, fantastic. Um, creating custom in place walls, creating stacked walls, which we cannot uh, overlook. Um, and then we're gonna get uh, right into the uh, curtain wall. Create a designing a curtain wall. But know that we're talking simple walls. Complex wall systems, which we, we looked at earlier, uh, are going to require a lot more in-depth examination of how it is you're going to deploy this tool. You're going to have to experiment. Uh, this is a basic wall. And for a lot of structures, this is going to work just fine uh, for most structures. But once you get into uh, pushing the envelopes of design, pushing, pushing uh, the uh, laws of nature, you're gonna you're gonna find it. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to spend some more time seeing how much power you can pull out of this program, because the sky's the limit. Uh, 